Hello everybody, this is Bugsy here, with another, re with a review, oh my god, it's been so long since I've done a review, oh my god, I think I've gone rusty, but I'll try my best, folks. Well, okay, let's talk about Pokemon The Power Bus. Now, we start this off with, with, uh, with a little bit of, with, with, uh, the narrator just going as you go spiel. But we don't. But we start off with um, we start off with the with the running with the running chick. We start off with the. Well, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna tell you the entire plot, but like this story, this story hits all the beats of poke. Doesn't really hit all the beats of the uh, standard Pokemon movie, and it feels more akin to how. Um. How Pokemon, how Pokemon Three and a few other Pokemon movies were, and I gotta say I like that. Eh, like there are moments in this movie um, that really tugged on my heartstrings in a lot of different ways, and there are moments where I was crying and I, for a minute, didn't understand why, and then I remembered. This, I remembered. It felt like, it felt like I was 10 years old again watching Pokemon 3 in the theaters with my dad. And you guys, you guys gotta understand, that was like the, that's like my most treasured memory I got of my dad. Because my dad did, my dad, I know we're kind of in the review for a minute, but I wanted to explain myself a little bit. Uh, my dad did not want to go to Pokemon 3, but he still took, he still took, he still took 10 year old, he still took a 10 year old Bugsy No Name, he still took a, like a 10 year old or 12 year old Bugsy No Name to the theater to go see Pokemon 3. And I don't know, just kind of reminded me of a simpler time. No other Pokemon movie has, no other recent Pokemon movie has done that. Except for, like, I Choose You. But, uh, yeah, so, let's see, but this is a direct play on Pokemon 2000. You know how they were, like, the power of one? Nah, this one's, like, the power of us. Which, basic, which, I'll, t I'll explain in a minute, because I do have a theory on that. But well, we see Ash. Ash is just there, you know, doing the thing, just doing his usual. You know, I'm Ash Ketchum, and I love Pokemon, and blah, 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 blah. So, so basically, um, but mostly the other characters have an arc. We have the old lady who actually lost a, po who lost a Pokemon and is learning how to love again. We have the scientist dude with the green hair going like. We have the scientist dude with the green hair. Just kind of not being able to deal with people. Um, and learning how to be more assertive for himself. Uh, but a little, little thing about the scientist dude. I really hated the other scientists that were like, hey, you gotta do this. You gotta do this project. You gotta do this project for us. And I'm like, motherfucker. I'm like, mother, you motherfucking scientist. Don't you understand this man can't go up against, he like, he, he doesn't know how to fucking deal with people. This man exhibited a lot of anxiety. And it kind of hit home for me because, you know, I do have anxiety. You know, and... I understand how this man, I understand how this man feels. It's like, this, and you know, these guys are like being dicks, just asking him to go up in front of people like he can, like, dude can handle it. And then the other scientists get mad at him, like, towards the middle of the movie, going like, we should have never trusted him. Um, and the other ones, the other scientists stuck up for him and saying, does it, do any of you love Pokemon as much as he does? Does, do any of you, do any of you put enough passion into what, what you do as much as he does? And they all got quiet. I was like, 
And I would have just put if I was like if, like if I was a scientist in that one situation, I would have busted out. If I was there, I'd have if like if I was a scientist in that exact situation, I I would have pointed out too. This man does not know how to deal with people, and yet y'all wanted him to go up in front of people. Are you that? Are you all that stupid and brain dead? No, seriously, that really did piss me off. Because, like, y'all know he can't do, he can't really, like, uh, speak publicly to people like that. He's always hiding behind his chancy. And y'all just wanted him to speak like, like he was just gonna be a natural at it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just harping on that one part. <laughs> because that did piss me off. But they, um, and then we get to the running girl who finally catches herself an Eevee for her brother, which I thought he was, she was catching the Eevee for her brother, but really, after a while, that became her Pokemon? I was like, okay, didn't your brother want a Pokemon? But okay, he was your Pokemon, I guess. All right. <laughs> then we got the little, then we got the little girl who, uh, Basically, is hiding one of the new, one of the newest, latest legendaries at the time. And then we got the dude that's kind of like a mixture of Hercule and Quark. With a little bit of, um, with a little bit of Usopp in there, for good measure. And he has a little niece, and he, you know, he's, like, known for lying to her and making these really, really big stories and uh, just basically lying to the little girl just to make, just to, you know, tell her little stories. And basically, they do the lie reveal thing very early because, you know, the uncle basically, the, the uncle dude basically goes... Um, he basically goes and, uh, asks, asks the green-haired scientist dude, and he's like, hey, um, because the scientist dude actually sees him speak publicly to people, like, really hold a crowd together, and he's like, dude, I need you to public speak for me because I can't do it. And he's like, okay, but you have to do something for me first, and he, they do something called a catching, like a catching race or something? A catching battle? And basically, basically, he get, basically, he kind of catches something, and then, uh, then the pseudo, then the pseudo wudo, actually, the pseudo, the pseudo wudo, actually, like, follows him, and what ensues with that is, like, the most heartfelt thing I've ever seen in Pokemon in a long-ass time. I mean, more heartfelt than the old lady who lost her snook, who lost her Pokemon in a goddamn fire. Like, seriously, that snuggle, that snug bull died, man. They, like, in these new Pokemon movies now, they have the balls to kill off Pokemon now. And I'm just like, where was this Pokemon back in the day, man? Oh, and the guy who wrote this was the same dude who did uh, X. X, the X and Y anime and Pokemon, which that man does pretty good character stuff, and I and I gotta applaud him. I don't know his exact name right now, like it escapes me, but he did he did a pretty good job, and I hope they call this man to do more um more Pokemon more Pokemon movies because we certainly do need him. And like, okay, let me get to the little girl. The little girl, on the other hand wanted, um, wants to protect Zora Aura, which is the, uh, newest, latest, uh, legendary at the time, and he was, you know, they, she's like, you know, she was basically trying, you know, because the, the dude that's like a mixture between Hercule, Usopp, and Quark was like, hey, there's a rare Pokemon, and everyone wanted to go find that, and it attracted some Pokemon bandits, and those Pokemon bandits were like, there must be a rare Pokemon out here. Basically, this whole, t this town that they're in has, like, this fl this this flame that, uh, helps uh, Lugia basically 
goes and basically Lugia basically goes and uh, helps them with the win and you know and Team Rocket stupid as they are which felt like a return to form because I haven't watched Pokemon in a very long time I barely watched Sun and Moon only in certain like parts when Team Rocket started rapping Team Rocket started rapping with with uh, Team Skull, I was, Team Skull, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> but other than that, they're pretty much the same. They feel like they used to back in the back in the good old days. They use very little though, and I kind of like that. But they're still not the same old Team Rocket I used to know, who who were characters that were in Team Rocket, but they just. But even though they're in a bad, they're in a bad organization. They're not really technically bad people. But uh, you know, personally, but they are stupid. Let me let me just say they stole this, they stole this stun, this stun effect thing, which is like this massive stun cloud that like stuns and probably like weakens everybody, and it starts like a forest fire. Which I'm like, I don't know how that. I don't know how that fucking happened. Actually, I do. They said it was the, uh, it, uh, shorted, it shorted, um, it, it short-circuited some of the stuff, and it started a big old forest fire. And, uh, basically, but basically what had happened is they were trying to figure out, they were figuring out ways to kind of, um, you know, stop this. And it really felt like a goddamn Pokemon apocalypse. Like, it felt like the closest thing we'll ever get to a goddamn Pokemon apocalyptic movie. <laughs> because everybody wants, like, a Pokemon apocalyptic movie. Even though I feel like Pokemon Company, even though they got balls now, they got, like, big, massive fucking, fucking gargantuan, um... Brass stones, they don't got enough stones to uh, really do a Pokemon apocalyptic movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> but this was close enough. And uh, all the characters had an arc, a beginning, a middle, and it really worked. Ash is the only one that didn't have an arc because, you know, nowadays, even though Ash is, even though this version of Ash, and I say this version of Ash because I'm about to talk about it. Because at the end of this, I'm going to tell you my theory on this. He wasn't really a dumb idiot like he usually is that can't remember how to catch Pokemon. Yeah, Ash, I remember. You had to let the little, you had to let Iris teach you how to catch Pokemon again, you motherfucker. I want to, uh, but, uh, sorry, sorry. I, 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 uh, I get like that sometimes with Ash. And people... Yes, I do get angry at various things in Pokemon, and I do review like that. But unlike the Nostalgia Creek, I legitimately get angry. <laughs> but, um... But basically... Um, he's not really that dumb, but he doesn't really have an arc. I mean, you can basically... I mean, uh, originally when I heard The Power of Us, when I first heard it was happening... I thought it was going to just do it without Ash, but uh, we had to put Ash in here somehow. So, yeah, that was something. Ash even fights the bi the uh, big old legendary, but uh, it kind of goes in the same way of um, the first Pokemon movie where Ash kind of get like, Ash has his sort of dying scene, but he wasn't really dead. He was just knocked out, which I was like, actually, that that's pretty good. That's fucking good, actually. But yeah, all of, and Ash said, "All of you, all of you, if humans can't do stuff alone, but if we all have our Pokemon partners to help us, we have Pokemon power." And everybody was saying Pokemon power. It was so fucking cheesy, but it it didn't fail to bring a tear to my eye because it just reminded me why I love Pokemon so fucking much. <clears throat> and I've been... S and I stayed away from it for a while. I mean, yeah, I'll play any game that comes out, but, yeah, you know, I've been staying away from Pokemon for so 
long. Um, you know, it just, I've been staying away from Pokemon for so long for various reasons, and when I got to watch this, it felt like, it felt like I was, it felt like I was, uh, it felt like I was 10 again, and, uh, that's something I can, I really thank this movie for doing. I was, che I was cheering in it. I was cheering. I was watching this by myself, mind you. Um, but I really enjoyed it. But, um... But, yeah. I, um... I give this movie... I give this movie, like, a 10 out of 10. Because, for everything... For everything... Like, there were no Pokemon movieisms. Only the one where Ash gets like off, kinda. But other than that, it was it was a pretty good, enjoyable movie, and like they kept the Je they kept the Japanese audio, which you got to hear a you got to hear like the beginning uh, when you're in the beginning town, you hear the boom 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 boom, but it was all jazzy and shit, and I was I was loving that shit. It was, it was basically using all the Pokemon things together, and at the very end of the movie, you get, like, the narrator going, like, uh, doing his usual Pokemon spill. And it just, it felt like I was watching the an the first, the early seasons of the anime again. I was like, oh, <laughs> god damn it. This movie systematically made me care, again, about Made me care about the Pokemon anime stuff again, and I was like, wow, this movie actually made me care again. Oh yeah, the run, the chick that had the EV had to run all the way to basically um, get, get the flame back on its pedestal, which real again, is kind of a callback to Pokemon 2000. Which I thought was very interesting, and that leads me to my next point. Now that the review's kind of done, I have a theory. You know how Pokemon I Choose You basically <laughs> reworked everything we knew about everything we knew about the first episode, which I think sent Ash down a different path. And Ash had never met Misty and Brock. And Ash said never, never went down that island, and he he never found out he was the chosen one. And Ash said probably didn't have his mom taken away by an Entei. This Ash is the one from I Choose You, which set off a different chain of events, which started a different timeline. That's why Ash basically says he's never met Lugia. Now our old boy Ash from the old from the anime and the and the timeline we know he has met Lugia, but this Ash he has not, which set down a whole different things in the motion that started a separate timeline. Because this movie took cues from Pokemon Two Thousand. Not every last thing, but just the main thing. I mean, the movie basically says the power of us, when originally it used to be the power of one. So I think the new Pokemon movies that we're going to see now is either is setting up a different timeline. A different timeline of events, a different Ash, a different Pikachu, the beginning point how they met was the same, but everything else is different. And I think that's what Pokemon Choose You is. Another timeline. A place where they could actually experiment with this version of Ash and be like, hey, it's not connected to the main the main timeline, the main the main thing is the main uh, structure of things, so we can actually make we can actually do more stuff with Ash. And I think that's what they're doing. Also, I caught the the, 
the girl, the runner girl, uh, knew Misty. And her brother was this... Okay, well, let me tell you about her brother. Her brother was basically the, the kid that was from, like, Hey, this is the Pokemon channel. He's, like, giving updates and shit to a lot of the people. I thought it was just, like, a little throwaway joke. But, uh, actually, it had a payoff. And I was like, Damn, Pokemon, you doing all the stuff I used to say you should do. You know, I was ext I was extremely happy with this movie. And I feel like... If it's at your theater or whatever, anyway, anyway you can go see it, go see it. It's not, it's, it's actually pretty good. It's actually pretty awesome. You need to see it. It's, and if you're an old Pokemon fan that's been shaded and jaded from all the shit that happened, that all the shit that happened with the Pokemon series, or if you're totally tripping out about Sword and Shield, I suggest you go watch this. Oh, and another thing. I'm still going to get Sword and Shield. Because, guys, you want me to hate it? This movie made me want to give Sword and Shield a chance. A chance. Because I play things before I judge them. And I know that's passe, that's blase. People don't really do that anymore. I'm a fucking old ass dinosaur. I can, I get you, but that's the way I do things around here. Okay. If some of you don't like it, y'all can go. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, I'm not gonna sit here and justify what I do to you guys if you ain't gonna, if you ain't gonna, if you don't get it. But I'm getting Sword and Shield a chance, and yeah. I'm pretty much done with this video. I mean, what do you guys think about this alternate timeline? If you've seen The Power of Us, how did you, did you, did you like it the same way I did? Did it tug at your heartstrings? Did you, did you feel something or was that just me? Uh, in any case, I'll see you all later. Bugsy. Bugsy out. And, uh, you know, like I always say, folks, at the end of every video, peace. See you all real, see you guys real soon.